as super welterweight Erickson the Hammer Lubin takes on a towering inferno Sebastian Fundora for a title eliminator. A very interesting matchup that I can see going a couple different ways. Both Lubin and Fundora are southpaw, so it's a closed stance fight. However, searching through Lubin's career, I see no southpaws on his resume, whilst Fundora has only fought one southpaw. I tried to at least find a closed stance sparring match for Lubin, and all I can come up with was Lubin sparring Montana Love, who's a good fighter, but he's five foot eight and campaigns two weight classes below Lubin and Fundora. For those that don't know, the main problem isn't the weight, it's the fact that Fundora is almost a whole foot taller with almost a whole foot longer wingspan than Montana Love, so that's not going to cut it. Therefore, this is going to be a completely one-sided film study exploring a six foot five and a half inch, 80 inch wingspan Sebastian Fundora in the closed stance. The Towering Inferno. Let's get into it. Fundora is a front foot pressure fighter. The giant super welterweight is a problem stalking his opponents utilizing his reach and length generating power in his long jabs and crosses. Most opponents including Lubin are at a vast disadvantage from outside range from the outset of the fight. Put simply, he can hit you when you can't hit him, which always makes him a dangerous threat in a tough fight. When he closes range he shows flashes of good skill and he also isn't opposed to going blow for blow on the inside. Fundora's jab is stiff and powerful. He uses front steps, front shuffles, pendulum steps, or false steps to always transfer weight to his back foot so he can spring forward for maximum power. He'll also surprise opponents after he establishes the jab with long lead hand hooks with the same setup. While he's cutting off the ring, Fundora's reach and length is a problem. Fundora's back foot can be center ring and still be a half step away from corner traps. Opponents have to adjust to Fundora being able to hit them in spots that more normal sized fighters can't reach. If they aren't extra vigilant while circling out, Fundora can clip them with jabs, hooks, and crosses. The combinations Fundora prefers are the jab cross and the lead hand hook cross, which both of course take advantage of his reach and length. Fundora uses the pendulum step to close range and unleashes either combination with power. Fundora has shown he is capable of a myriad of slip counters. But nine times out of ten, Fundora counters jabs with jabs or hooks. Again, spoiled by his length, an opponent's jab automatically triggers a jab response as his 80-inch wingspan is bound to reach its target while opponent's jabs usually fall short. In this particular fight, his opponent just so happened to be 6'2 with the 80-inch wingspan, which is also irregular for the weight division, but yet and still, Fundora felt comfortable with the automatic counter with the height advantage. Fundora is also good at shortening up his punches to attack inside. Inside backhand uppercuts are a staple to his game along with hooks that can vary the trajectory to easily loop behind high guards. Once Fundora gets in range, he virtually always initiates offense with a jab or a long hook or sweeping jab. Working behind the jab isn't a flaw, but being predictable is, and that predictability is compounded by virtually zero jab feints. When Fundora jabs to the body, it's the exact same front step shuffle with no feint, making it easier to time for a counter or to defend.
Fandora has what I'll call an interesting habit of turning his jab before he pushes it out. Whether this is trained for some reason or just a bad gym habit, I honestly don't know. I will say I've never heard of a jab being trained like that in 25 years of studying the sport. Fundamentally, we are taught to turn the jab over by the end of the punch, which generally helps muscles tense on impact, making the punch harder or stiffer. But whether trained or bad habit, it can be used by the opponent as a tell that the jab is imminent. Like mentioned earlier, nine times out of ten, Fundora is countering a jab with a jab or a lead hand hook. A smart opponent can easily take advantage by baiting the jab and countering the counter in a myriad of ways, including slips, overhands, crosses, and hooks. Fandora also commits the mistake of reaching to catch the jab away from his chin with the backhand while in range, easily recognized and taken advantage of by high level fighters who would just turn the jab into a hook and make Fandora pay for it. On top of that, Fandora has issues defending with the backhand, often leaving it low or unprepared for what would be a lead hand from a southpaw opponent. Fundora's lone southpaw opponent found his most success initiating offense and manipulating the guard with lead hand jabs and hooks to clear the lane for backhand attacks. Given Fundora's issues mentioned, manipulating the lead hand might be the perfect way to attack Fundora. This being Fundora's first open stance fight, I'm not sure he worked out what to do with his lead hand in mid-range to inside exchanges. At times, it was just low in the sling doing nothing somewhere in between a Philly shell and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. And finally, at times you could force Fundora to shell up in the high guard. Subscribers say it with me. There are many holes around the high guard. With all that said, I still don't know who wins this fight. With all of Fundora's weaknesses in the closed stance, Lubin still has zero pro fight experience against another southpaw. He will have to rely on his experienced sparring fellow Southpaws and hopefully his team were able to get him adequate sparring for his training camp. 
The fight's approaching quickly, and my affiliate BetUS Sportsbook, link in the description, has both Lubin and Fundora at minus 120, which literally means they have no idea who's going to win either. When the fight props pop up, I'll put a small wager up on either fighter depending on the odds. I'll let y'all know in the community page. But I want to know who y'all got. As always, thanks for watching. Smash the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Peace.